Hi everyone, our subject today is constipation in pediatrics. Constipation is a very common pediatric problem. It can be defined as delay or difficulty in passage of stool for more than two weeks, resulting in distress to the patient. Stool are often painful or hard to pass. Functional constipation that is not due to organic or anatomic causes. Incorporesis, also known as fecal incontinence, is fecal soiling that occurs in the presence of a chronic functional constipation. When the constipation is severe and if it has been a long-standing problem since early infancy, it is necessary to rule out an underlying or organic disorder. Inquire specifically about intermittent large stool because some children with constipation will have a daily bowel movement but with incomplete emptying and retention of a large stool mass. Parents may describe stool with holding maneuver of gluteal tightening and posturing which are sometimes interpreted as attempt to strain or defecate. Occasionally, a parent will misinterpret the sign of incorporesis as diarrhea. A diet history for fluid and fiber intake may be helpful. In some infant, ingestion of large amounts of cow milk is associated with constipation. Concerns about possible abuse should be addressed in social history. Recent psychosocial changes and stressor should be also explored. The family history may reveal a risk factor for her shivering disease, such as disorder itself or certain syndrome like trisomy 21, Wanderberg, and Williams. A careful spine and neurological examination should be done to rule out spinal disorder that could be contributing to constipation. An anal wink elicited by stroking the perianal skin with a sharp edge ensures normal sacral innervation. A digital rectal examination may help. Children with the chronic constipation have a dilated rectal ampulla and a large hard stool mass unless they had a recent large bowel movement. Most children with Hirschebring disease will not have any palpable stool in the first few centimeters of the anal canal. If functional constipation is suspected, it is reasonable to presumably treat the patient with the education, dietary changes, and medication. Treatment of constipation consists of a clean out of the retained stool and maintenance regime of stool softening and toileting practices to sustain evacuation and restore normal rectal and colon tone. Attention to family dynamics and the response to of both the parents and child to the problem should be addressed. If there is inadequate response or there is concern for organic etiology, further investigation is suspected suggested. Situational constipation is usually short-lived and the situational in response to recent change or stress, such as training, day, starting daycare, travel, or birth of a sibling. For some children, the transition to all day school and the associated loss of privacy will contribute to withholding behaviors. Any condition causing a, day, a decrease in the child's normal activity level, illness, injury, surgery is also a risk factor for constipation. Any change in diet, especially starting cow milks, is constipating for some children. Psychological factor or constitutional factor such as internecially slow motility can also exacerbate any cause of constipation. In chronic cases, stool retention results in a vicious cycle of retained stool, painful defecation, resisting the urge to defecate, further retaining of stool, 
and so on. These children are at risk for incorporesis. How to approach the child with constipation after performing history and physical examination? Is, uh, it is severe constipation present since infancy. If it is yes, perform free T4, TSH, calcium. If it is abnormal, differential diagnosis, hypothyroidism, hypercalcemia, hyperparathyroidism. If it is normal, perform abdominal x-ray, barium enema, refer for rectal manometry, rectal biopsy. Differential diagnosis may include Hirschebring disease, meconium ileus, cystic fibrosis, meconium plug, colonic abnormality, atresia, duplication, rectocele, small left colon, and chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction. If it is not present since infancy or not severe, any of the following is present excessive cow milk intake, poor diet, toilet training problems, stress, illness, change in routine, retentive behavior, medication, drugs, toxin. If it is no, if there is a abnormal physical examination, differential diagnosis may include anorectal lesion, fissures, hemorrhoid, Hirschebring disease, connective tissue disorder, SLE, scleroderma, anorectal lesion, fissures, hemorrhoid, abscess, trauma, anorectal malformation, stenosis, anterior anal displacement, ectopic anus, imperforated anus, abnormal abdominal musculature, brown belly, gastroschisis, spinal cord lesion, tethered cord, spina bifida, neurological botulism, cerebral palsy, myotonic dystrophy. If there is any of the following present, treatment, education, diet, with or without medication, if there is a response to the treatment, if it is yes, differential diagnosis, functional constipation, behavioral, situational constipation, phobia, abuse, corrective toilet training, milk protein intolerance, irritable bowel syndrome, medication, drugs, toxin. If there is no response to treatment, consider free T4, TSH, calcium, lead, electrolyte, celiac panel. If it is abnormal, differential diagnosis, hypercalcemia, lead toxicity, hypothyroidism, hypokalemia, celiac disease. If it is a normal result, consider abdominal x-ray, barium enema, referred for rectal manometry, rectal biopsy, Differential diagnosis may include severe functional constipation, chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction, Hirschebring disease, muscular dystrophy, acquired structure. Recommended investigation Urine analysis to exclude an associated UTI. A plain abdominal x ray may show distended bowel and rectum, mega colon, full of feces. Thyroid function test. Uh, and uh, serum uh, calcium to exclude uh, hypothyroidism and hypercalcemia, rectal biopsy if there is a clinical suspicion of Hirschebring disease. Top tips. By far the most common cause of constipation is functional, organic disease like uh, Hirschebring's, hypothyroidism, hypercalcemia, renal tubular acidosis are rare in pediatric, less than 5%. Looking at the child can give important clues to the underlying diagnosis, hypothyroidism, failure to thrive, distended abdomen in Hirschebring disease, or elephant face in hypercalcemia. Parents often interpret withholding stool as pushing. Explanation should be given for that. Although fecal incontinence is usually secondary to overflow to fecal retention, in 80%, it may occur without constipation, functional non-retentive fecal incontinence in 20% of cases. The latter is unclear etiology but may be associated with emotional problems. Hirschebring disease, a ganglionic segment present with a various degree of obstruction in a unit, empty rectum by rectal palpation may suggest disease. Constipation should not be accepted as the cause of abdominal pain without consideration of alternative diagnosis. 
Fecal incontinence associated with constipation may be mistaken as diarrhea. The parent should receive information about mechanism causing fecal incontinence. Treatment of children with fecal incontinence is urgently needed to avoid poor quality of life, poor self-esteem, and social withdrawal. These features disappear after successful treatment. Organic causes of fecal incontinence may not be evident in every case, but need to be considered in evaluation of each case. These include tethered cord, malabsorption, and endocrine causes. Be aware, constipation may have an underlying physical, sexual, or emotional abuse. Thank you.